to know. Yeah. And that's why it's so important that we work um, with the uh, religious community that's because right. the pastor can pick up the phone and call the court coordinator right. and wow. say, and we can also do it by email. Same thing with the crisis intervention mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. When they, they're called out and mm -hmm. somebody's hit his dad and we mm -hmm. keep going through this over and over again because <sighs> the, the son is mentally ill, then they can uh, call the court. Also, MHMRA can give us a printout mm -hmm. overnight mm -hmm. of everyone arrested the day before and how many hospital okay. days and jail days they've had. So we know this person has, has been in the hospital mm -hmm. 90 days. Right. We talk about expensive. Yes. Um, expensive. Yes. Um, and there's somebody perhaps you should consider for the mental health court mm -hmm. to get them stabilized so we can get a printout so the coordinator can go to that court That's and good. talk to that prosecutor and defense lawyer. Oh, that is yeah. so and of course, good. The lawyers to know. Are, are, the major, are the major source, but it's not up yet. Yeah. So we got to get the money to get it going, right. but we've done this enough years that now we know how to do it. Of course, mm -hmm. we'll get better with time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we know how, what to do and how to do it. We just need the staff right. to expand, right. and we're going to get it. We're going to we're going to get that it. It's just a matter so of time. Exciting. That it is is exciting. So exciting. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. To know yes. that 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 yeah. someone can call because when we when we we've seen incidents that have happened that if someone would have just made that call, mm -hmm. something could have been done. Yeah, because it's and such a shame to have that criminal record and get back out and, exactly, then, and, exactly. then, and then do it again. You know, uh, I had, had somebody in court earlier in the week and mm -hmm. he had the dreadlocks. And this particular person did not have a mental illness. Um, he had an intellectual disability, what used to be called mental retardation. So his IQ was about 65. And of course he was in special ed in school and he uh, had a long time marijuana addiction. Mm -hmm. Very charming mm -hmm. young man. But he came to court and he had had four negative UAs. And uh, after I talked to him, I asked the people in the courtroom to give him a round of applause. And it was so neat to see how excited he was. And that oh, he was wow. so excited. And he turned around and he waved <laughs> to the audience and kind of bowed. And, you know, it was really neat. It was a self esteem thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll also be taking people with head injuries. Mm -hmm. A dementia. We're beginning to see people, oh, you know, yes. <laughs> from my generation, <laughs> who usually they hit a spouse or a caseworker or something like that. Um, we'll be taking people with. And that was my next question to you. Was to ask, what would you be? What what kind of cases yeah. would you be seeing? Any, in mental anybody health? if we can find services for in mm -hmm. those areas. But the main three are always schizophrenia, mm -hmm. schizoaffective disorder. I, we don't really count schizophrenia as one of the three because it's kind of a cross mm -hmm, between mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. some of the others. But schizophrenia, schizoaffective, bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. and then major depressive disorder, which is different than just being depressed. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, yes, it's, yes. It's, yes. We actually had a show with. Uh, we've had several shows with depression, and and we've seen, and we've had a show with bipolar also. So we've seen the. So you know the, all about uh, it. So yeah. we know the difference, uh, the the bipolar and just the depression. Yeah, we know the difference in them. Uh, yeah. Because these people actually generated those symptoms uh, very, very well. <laughs> but it, I mean, you you have such exciting news for us, Judge Crocker. This is, I mean, just really exciting news about what's out there and what's coming. Because mm -hmm. I know that out there in the audience, uh, there there are people that are sitting there going, "Wow." I can actually get someone to, to help me. And that's what it's all about. You want to help yeah. them. You don't want them to have a record mm -hmm. if they don't, right. if they really don't, uh, don't have to have a record. Robin, do you have a question for the oh, judge? I'm just so very excited about the programs that you are going to bring to Harris County. Uh, you're going to have to wait until you get your fund, and these are not already in place, right? Well, I only work with my probationers, and mm -hmm. I, so I've had over a thousand <coughs> conferences oh, wow. with my own. I've been doing it uh, now about so eight years, and so yeah. and the probation department yeah. schedules them because I don't have a staff to do that, and we're mm -hmm. going really to really expand it. I'm well, very, thank you. very thank you, and I appreciate all the help and giving me a chance to talk about it. Oh, and yes, can I talk yes. about how cost effective it you is? Sure can. Just to remind you the can. county you sure commissioners, can. and they know By this, and they're supportive. <coughs> but it costs, means. as I'm sure you know, about $45 a day to keep somebody in jail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with medications, it mm -hmm. goes up to about right. 60 mm -hmm. If they're in the psychiatric ward of the jail mm -hmm. and they need a lot of care, mm -hmm. you're talking about $285 a day. Wow. And we used to have a contract with the Harris County Psychiatric Center, mm -hmm. the jail did, for those who are really ill. Mm -hmm. And that's been canceled due to lack of funding, oh. last I heard. But that's about $485 a day. Whereas you're talking about putting somebody 
uh, in a mental health court mm -hmm. and providing medication and yeah. treatment, mm -hmm. you're saving all those costs. So in the long run, a number of studies have been done on mental health courts, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. one in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it, no, it takes a while for the court to pay for itself, mm -hmm. but usually uh, within two years, 18 months, the court has already mm -hmm. paid for itself okay. because you save so much in hospitalization costs and so mm -hmm. much in jail costs. So it is very cost effective. <coughs> uh, it's a really good deal for the taxpayer. <laughs> it, yeah, the really taxpayer. good deal. How many uh, mental health courts are there around the country? About 300. About 300. That's not very many. They're about... Uh, 2,400 drug courts, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, the number of mental health courts is mm -hmm. much smaller. And uh, the first one just came in 97. Very interesting. Seattle had one of the earliest courts, mm -hmm. and that's because a man, he was actually in like municipal court, mm -hmm. was very ill. Everyone knew he was ill and knew he was dangerous, and he was released onto the street. And he went over in front of the Mariners sta Stadium after a game and stabbed a firefighter to death, oh, retired yeah. firefighter with five little girls. And so in Seattle, they said, we got to do something. It really mm -hmm. brought it to their attention early on. And sometimes they start because of tragedies. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> we're gonna do, let me just mention one thing, and that is we're right down the street, the courthouse is, straight down Fannin mm -hmm. from the largest medical center yeah. in the world. And Baylor and UT were on mm -hmm. the planning team. Pastor Nash was on the planning yeah. team. Over 100 people on the planning team. And it's a shame, and we have the Menninger Clinic here, mm -hmm. one of the premier clinics in the world. And I can't tell you how great they are at Baylor and UT. And we need to be working with those professors, they have mm -hmm. some of the top uh, psychiatrists mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. in the whole country, and mm -hmm. it's foolish for the criminal justice system not to mm -hmm. take advantage of exactly. the exactly. And U of H downtown is going to do the data collection and evaluation, mm -hmm. they're Good. graduate students, and then we'll have social work interns um, from U of H downtown, and I hope from the main U of H campus at the graduate level. So it's a real good chance for the community to work together. If the community does not adopt the court, it cannot be successful mm -hmm. because we need every bed and That's every right. treatment. Exactly. Because yeah. exactly. uh, yeah, as, as our funding as our funding is cut, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a problem. This has been such a uh, such an enlightening yeah. show, Judge, yes. uh, Judge Crocker. I've enjoyed um, it. I mean. You've just given us so much information, to, uh, and 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 your enthusiasm makes yes. me enthused. Yes. I, mean, I mean, you're Good. just really. I mean, I, you should hear yourself talk. I mean, it's yeah. you're off. you're you're passionate uh, uh, about this. Now, if you want to know more about uh, about this particular show, you can call us at seven one three seven three one seven zero five zero, and we can get you in touch with. Uh, uh, with, with the ones that have been on the show. And Judge Crocker, is there anything that you need to tell the audience that they need to, uh, as far as men, the mental health code is concerned? Well, I'd just like to say, if there's someone in your family who might have a mental illness, um, I hope you will encourage that person to get treatment and uh, if needed to take medication. And mental illness changes day to day, just like your leg might hurt a lot one day and not so much the next day. Mm -hmm. Mental illness is the same way. And sometimes <coughs> people later in life develop mental illness, for example, and the family has to be educated. Just last month, I had a really young kid and his grandparents were in court. They knew nothing about mental illness because it, um, there were some people on the other side of the family mm -hmm. who had it. But on the side of the family that these grandparents were on, mm -hmm. no one had it. And I said, if you want to help him, you're going to have to learn about mental illness. Mm -hmm. And when he came back, I said, how are things? He said, oh, my grandparents understand. You know, they loved him enough yeah. that they went That's out right. and oh, learned wow. about That's the illness good. so they That's could right. help yeah. him and ask the mm -hmm. doctor, what can we do to help? Right. And if right. you have someone in your family, <laughs> Um, you need to encourage them to get treatment, and you need to learn everything you can about mental yeah. illness. So. And don't hide it. Um, yeah. we, right. we have to unlock that key. As long as we hide it and don't ask questions, that's right. it's never going to get any better. Uh, that's true. It's not going to get any better for the family. Yeah. It sends more to, uh, to you. So, so much can happen if we, don't, if we try to hide it because it affects, it, it, it affects all of us. Now, we're planning some, some big events over at the Marcel Keys activity center we're going to have a big rally on june the 15th mm -hmm. well we're going to bring some uh public officials together we're inviting george crocker to come out and i'll we're be inviting, there uh, george parnum to come out we're inviting them to come out we're going to have a forum on 
on mental health. We want to bring it into Sunnyside, yeah. uh, into yeah. our area of town. We know that, that it's out there, but we want, and we're going to invite as many as we can to come out to this rally uh, uh, at the center so they can learn just a little bit mm -hmm. more about mental health. Pastor, do you have some uh, One other thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I've seen people in the community that are real, real bad off uh, as far as mentally deserved. And I think sometimes uh, family members, uh, they get so frustrated that they want to call the police and tell them, you know, to take them. Now, is, am I right in saying that before you can just come out and get somebody uh, that's mentally impaired like that or disturbed, don't they have to commit a crime before they can get a... I well, mean, I someone, don't someone can be civilly committed mm -hmm. if they're uh, a danger to themselves or mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. else or okay. if they can't make a rational decision. Okay. So they can take them to the hospital. Okay. But if someone is so out of control mm -hmm. that you need the police when you call you mm -hmm. really need to ask for the crisis mm -hmm. intervention unit ask for a specially <coughs> trained mental health officer hpd has i've been through their training i went out to the Good. police academy years <laughs> ago and went through it mm -hmm. because they teach police officers how to speak with mentally ill and you know what i'm glad you said that for this oh, reason yes yes because, yes, uh, yes many many people in the african-american community are afraid to call the police mm -hmm. Because if the police officer have not had any training, mm -hmm. uh, it can be a bad situation. That's right. Uh, I, I do know that that sometimes uh, people are reluctant to call the police. So training is very important. I, I, I even made a request one time that in a situation like that, if you send the police, send somebody like a, a doctor, a psychiatrist, somebody familiar with people like that, bring them out to and let them assess the that's situation right. before if the police if it's necessary the police use force that's one thing but to have somebody to assess the situation so let, let me talk to this person let's see how far we can go without you the know, person getting involved there are some units that actually have case workers trained mm -hmm. social workers mm -hmm. who are experienced in this right, area who right. know how to talk with someone who's in mm -hmm. crisis or mm -hmm. who may be psychotic right. and they actually ride with the officer and wear the bulletproof vest and wow. all that oh, okay. and so if, if you can ask for one of those units obviously there are only so many on the streets at a mm -hmm. time but, but uh, HPD really is a leader in this area so mm -hmm. when you call the police mm -hmm. make sure they know this person is that mentally is exactly ill. Right. That's, That's exactly right. right. Because that, it, like Pastor is saying, that could turn into a uh, turn into a bad situation, and it could be something that they could be talked out of. And if you're trained, and it's good to know that they are training the officers mm -hmm. to come out, because we've heard the horror stories about what has happened. You know, mm -hmm. when when the police have come out. We don't know all the, the facts behind it, but we do know that it did not turn out to be a good situation. So it's good to know that they are being trained. There is, you, you can ask for specific people to come out, uh, you yes. know, in situations like yeah. this. This has been a great show, and we're just about out of time. But, uh, George Crocker, we want to thank you so much for being well, here with us. Thank you for us. having oh, me. So much for so being here Always delightful being to here see you with guys. Us. Uh, uh, you have been just a just a well of information yes. for us today and 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 we hoping that uh, out there in our audience that someone will be helped with some of the things that you've said uh community wise that we will get involved uh, yes. like you say it's going to take all of us coming together yes. that we will get involved yeah. uh, with what is going on as far as mental health is concerned and again we want to thank you robin for being here pastor thank you for thank allowing you. us to to have this show this has been a good show. Yes, I it mean, is. the enthusiasm has been just been great. really yeah. great, great. Uh, George Crocker. And, and we're hoping out there that you all did get something from the show and tune in uh, with us on next week. Uh, uh, in June, we're going to be having some great some great speakers that's going to be that's going to be here with us. So please continue to watch the Sunnyside Community Voice because we are going to give you what you need that's going to help you along the way, and we thank you for being here with us today.